This little guy right here, this is IRDX Core, a plugin from Bogren Digital, and we're gonna check it out. What's up everyone? Chris with B Money Demos. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, go ahead and do the normal YouTube stuff. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave me a comment at the end of it. Let me know what you thought for sure, because I think this is kind of an interesting one. Uh, do, turn on the notification bell, share this video, you know, do all the YouTube stuff. This morning I was sitting down to put the finishing touches on a video that I had been working on um, for the Nimbrini Audio Basement, which is their Fender Basement style plugin, and I used it last week on my video, and I was gonna go in depth a little more on it. But as I sat down, I was kind of checking my emails, I was getting everything going, and I saw an email for like a promotional price from Bogren Digital for the IRDX Core, uh, and you could also do like a free trial. Now this isn't a new product, um, I had kind of seen the videos when it first came out, but I didn't really watch them. You know, like they just kind of showed up in my queue. Um, and I've never really used any of the Bogren Digital stuff before, so I didn't pay them any attention. But it was something about the tagline on this in this email that kind of caught my attention, and I decided I would give it a shot. So we're going to read directly from the website about what IRDX Core is. Breathe life into your guitar amp sims and cabinet impulse responses. That sounds amazing. Simply add IRDX Core after your guitar amp or IR loader plugin and discover the natural movement, the 3D sensation, the slightly jagged edges, and the unpredictability you could previously only obtain by recording an actual guitar cabinet at high volumes with a microphone. That just means it's supposed to make your digital amp, sim, or even a modeler and your IRs sound more real. Now that's always the thing with the digital stuff is that people complain that it doesn't really sound real and they complain that what you lose is the feel. And I think that's kind of what this is aimed at, at putting back into your signal path. So this is basically meant to kind of emulate that feeling that you get of placing a microphone in front of a moving speaker and, and adding that extra, I guess, kind of sensation to your tone. So, hey, like I said, I was working on another video, but I thought, you know what, that can wait. I want to give this a shot. So I downloaded the free trial and we're going to take a look at it. Now I did this a little differently than I normally do with plugins. I didn't spend time like getting to know it. There really isn't that much to it. Um, I downloaded it. I made sure that once I threw it in my DAW, everything worked the way it should. And then that was kind of it. I started actually working on the video kind of immediately. We're gonna go ahead and get into the sounds. For these sounds, I used three different amp sim plugins all three using three different types of IRs, like from three different uh, companies. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to see, like, does it kind of give you the same vibe no matter what you're using? Does it really depend on the quality of the IR that you're using? Uh, you know, like, can you really just throw it at the end of your uh, plug-in chain behind your favorite IRs and, and get a noticeable difference? In this, I use STL Tones Amp Hub. I use a rocker verb model that I have in there. With that, I just use the baked in um, orange 212 and 412 cabs. Next is Tonocracy. I use the dual rectifier with an ML Sound uh, orange cab that actually comes free with the plugin. Finally, I use the Nimbrini Audio 8180, which is a PV5150. This is a really new one to me. Uh, I also got the trial version of it this morning just to see if I like it. Setting up for this video was kind of the first time I've ever used it. Uh, I paired it with an own hammer rectifier 412. And then at the end, I kind of wanted to see how it would react to something like a fuzz pedal. So I used that Faceman from Nimbrini, the, the Fender Baseman, uh, with two Atlas 612 cabs, just like I used last week. Uh, and I throw the Fuzz Imp Cinder V in front of it. This is like a, a super duper muff that does everything from light drive to super blown out fuzz sounds. You'll hear me play the plug-in without 
IRDX, uh, then I'll turn it on, calibrate it, because you have to calibrate it for each plug-in, um, and then kind of bounce back and forth uh, between having it on and having it off. Let me know what you guys think. I'm really, really curious. <laughs> So you can hear, I can hear, and I can kind of feel on my desk, I can feel the changes. It's actually pretty cool. All right. <clears throat> so now I've got Tonocracy pulled up. Uh, I've just got their dual rectifier model uh, with the ML Sound Labs Orange 412. It comes with it, uh, and so I just stuck with that. <laughs> This time I've got the Nimbrini 8180, uh, which is obviously their version of a 5150. And I have the own hammer uh, rectifier 412 with a 57 on it. So here's what it sounds like without IR. <laughs> Thank you. 
For this last one, I'm pulling up that Faceman from Nimbrini uh, that I used last week, and it's what I was going to do my video on this week. I'm going to throw this uh, Sender V uh, from Fuzzamp in front of it and just kind of see if the IRDX makes a huge difference when you're putting fuzz in it. I think maybe most noticeably what you miss out on when you talk about that feel of like moving speakers you, you probably notice it most with something like fuzz i would assume uh so we're going to test that out we're going to we're going to see if that's that's the way it is so uh here's clean tone <laughs> guys look that was it when i do these videos when i get to the end like this i haven't listened back to what i recorded so what i'm going off of right now for my kind of overall thoughts is what i heard in the room while i was doing this in the room the irdx had the biggest impact on the stl tones amp hub and tonocracy i noticed a little bit of difference on <laughs> the 8180 uh, but not the same kind of difference and honestly sound wise I never heard a huge difference in any of them um, it seemed like maybe it would add a little more top end to them not in a bad way maybe like a little more top end clarity which kind of wasn't really what I was expecting but sitting in front of it sitting in front of my monitors and playing I did feel a difference I could feel a difference in the way the table was vibrating. It was really, really cool. And I hope that that comes across in the audio because 
No, it isn't a huge difference maker, um, but it is something that I think, especially if you record a whole lot, I think it's something that can really liven up the mix. I thought this was pretty cool. Um, it didn't have, like I said, it didn't have a massive impact, um, and I don't know that it's something that I would use all the time. But it was really interesting to click it on and physically feel a difference in the way the speakers were reacting to the sound. That was kind of surprising. I didn't expect that. All right, look, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you got something from it. Please let me know what you think of this. If you've used it, if I need to spend more time with it, let me know. Um, I thought it was, like I said, I thought it was interesting. Um, but it, it just like the biggest difference was kind of feel in the room at least from what I could hear. So listen, everybody have an amazing week. I'll see you later.